we come after breakfast? Yeah. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Shri Pancha Tattva ki, Jai, Srila Prabhupada ki, Jai. So I was instructed to um, read as much as I can of this 23rd chapter of Madhya Leela, entitled Life's Ultimate Goal. And so for first, uh, practically five or six verses, there's just translations, and we'll try to go all the way up to verse 13, where there's a lengthy purport. <clears throat> so, yeah. Chiramadatta Nijagupta Vittam Svapremanam Amritam Atyudaraha Aparamam yo vita tara gaura Krishna jana vyas tara hampa badye Chiraradatam nija gupta vittam Swaprema namamrita adyudaraha Aparam yo vitatara gora Krishna jana vyastara ham prabadhyay Chat? Ladies,
<coughs> Chirat for a long time. <coughs> Adatam not giving. Nijagupta Vitam his own personal confidential property. Suprema of love for him. Nama of the holy name. Amritam, the ambrosia, ati udaraha, most munificent, aparam, even down to the lowest of men, ya, one who, vitatara, distributed, goda, Sri Gaur Sundar, Krishna, Lord Krishna Himself, Janebya, to the people in general, Tam, to Him, Aham, I, Papadye, offer obeisances. Translation. The most munificent Supreme Personality of Godhead, known as Gora Krishna, distributed to everyone, even the lowest of men, his own confidential treasury in the form of the nectar of love of himself and the holy name. This was never given to the people at any time before. I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto him. So what verse does this remind you from the Chaitanya Bhagavat? Who knows? It's right at right the beginning of the chain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, similar, similar words, similar uh, meaning. Yeah. He's never before given this sweet ambrosial nectar before, and that is the intimate love of Vrindavan. And how is he distributing it widely to anyone and everyone? All you have to do is, well, of course, one has to be qualified, but we have to simply want to take it. Wanting it, wanting it is, is one of the most important qualifications for getting it. How bad you want it will mean how much you get it, really. Because Krishna Eva will see, if, even if you're not qualified, but if you really want it bad, he'll help you become qualified. So... That desire actually inspires what we say success. Even the qualifications will come by the, the strength of our desire. So what is that? Prema Pumarta Maha, pure love for Krishna. So this verse is very, <coughs> what we say, confidential, as the word is there in, in, the, tra in the purport, I'm sorry, in the Translation, his own confidential treasury in the form of nectar of love of himself and the holy name. So Krishna in two forms of himself, himself as the supreme deity and, and the Lord as the supreme manifestation of sound vibration, holy name. Never given before to any time in any of anyone. So then... All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Dvaita Chandra, all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. So now, what's happening is that there's a continuation of a narration by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami. He started it a few chapters ago, and this is a continuation. Verse 3, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, Now hear, O Sananta, about the result of devotional service, which is love of Godhead, life's ultimate goal. One who hears this description will be enlightened in the transcendental mellows of devotional service. Simply by hearing, one becomes enlightened. What is that? Enlightened, the mellows. What does the word mellows mean? How can we describe the word mellow? Mellow means what? Who wants to take a... It's a very, what we say, undefinable word, but it does have a definition that is close to its actual meaning, but can never be really 
described, yes. Flavor. Flavor, exactly. That's the best word. There's a flavor, just like you walk into an ice cream shop, right? And there's how many, we got, what is that famous ice cream shop many years ago? Used to have so many varieties. Well, that's a, a type of ice cream, but this was this one shop that he, and we used to, was famous in America anyway. <laughs> you know, they used to have 33 different flavors of ice cream. So you'd think you'd just sit there and you'd just go crazy trying to think which one you want, you know. Which ones? Huh? Which ones? Which ones? No, no, which ones? <laughs> ones with an S. Yeah, ones, yeah. Many. <laughs> Or what you want, they have this also, they have this uh, feature, you can get three different flavors in one cone, you know. They pile it in there, it's called, you know, a little bit of rasa, extra fruit. So yeah, so love of God has a sweet flavor, and it's called mellow. And there's different types of sweetness that come from love of God, according to how one is connected to Krishna in that mood of devotion. And we understand there's basically five, you know, Santaras, Dasyaras, Sakyaras, Vatsayaras, and Madhuryaras, the different uh, aspects of one's nature and how they, they serve the Lord according to that nature. So then we have the next verse. Uh, when affection for Krishna becomes deeper, one attains love of Godhead in devotional service. Such a position is called stai bhava, permanent enjoyment of the mellows of devotional service. So here, affection becomes deeper. Something funny? Stai bhava? You know a devotee by that name? Oh, he, he claimed to be a manifestation of Stai Baba. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sai Baba. Sai Baba. <sighs> We're sighing because <laughs> there's no Baba. <laughs> so, Stai Baba, yeah. Stai Baba is one of the aspects. I'm not sure of the actual description. Maybe Sai Baba. <laughs> Sai Baba. Sai Baba. <laughs> this is Sai Baba. <laughs> Stai Baba. <laughs> okay. So this in here is a very, very interesting statement. It says when affection becomes deeper. Everyone has affection for Krishna to some degree or at least for God, maybe they're, they're undefined as who God is, but they have, everyone has some, some connection, some affection, some, some relationship with God. Now when that becomes deeper, deeper means when it becomes heart, when it goes into the heart, the heart is called gupta. Gupta means something that is very hidden or secret. So love of God is very confidential, it's secret, it's hidden in the heart. But it's there, and it's like a great treasure, as was described in the previous verse. It's not only something that's very confidential, it's a treasure, it's nectar, and it goes deep. And when one becomes, insp one becomes inspired with that mood of deep affection for Krishna, then it says such a position, permanent enjoyment of the mellows of devotional service to Krishna awaken. In other words, it becomes a permanent feature of one's existence. And then, of course, as it takes on higher and higher forms of ecstasy, one can no longer, what we say, function. <laughs> one becomes somewhat dysfunctional. And that's good. There's different kinds of ways to become dysfunctional. <laughs> but the best way is not be able to function materially and because one is diverted in the right way towards Krishna in love of God her and deep emotions for Krishna. And then the next verse, when devotional service is executed on the transcendental platform, 
of pure goodness, it is like the sun ray of love for Krishna. So the analogy or the, the adjective is used sun ray. And so we know when the sun wake when a sun ray comes out, you feel happy, you feel warm, you feel illuminated. So the sun does so much in a positive way to enlighten or to fulfill a living entity materially. So, but when it's described here, it's like a sun ray for love of, for love of Krishna, this loving affection. When that happens, devotional service causes the heart to be soft <laughs> by various types of tastes. And then one becomes situated in bhava. So the heart becomes soft. So Krishna is called what? Makancho? He steals the butter, right? But if you give hard butter to somebody, you try to spread it on your bread, your bread breaks, right? So the butter has to be kind of soft so it can spread nicely. So when the heart is hard, like icy butter coming right out of the refrigerator, Krishna doesn't steal that kind of butter. He may steal it and keep it for later till it softens up. But he still likes to steal that butter that is really soft and what we say flowing and even becomes ghee, it's even sweeter. So this is the nature of love of God. It makes the heart soft. So Prabhupada said, referring to what is the mood of a devotee? His devotee has a strong mind and a soft heart. <laughs> Not a soft mind and a strong heart. <laughs> Sometimes we see the opposite. But it's a soft heart and a very strong mind. In other words, that mind is directed nicely towards Krishna in devotional service. The mind is sharp, the mind is clear. And the heart is soft. One feels compassion towards others and one feels love for Krishna. So, then he goes on to say, well, this verse is a reference from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Bhava has two different symptoms, constitutional and marginal. Now, my dear Sanatan, listen to the symptoms of love in Prabhupada's purport. The word Sudha Sattva Visheshatma means situated on the transcendental platform of pure goodness. In, the way, in this way, the soul is purified of all material contamination, and this position is called sarupya lakshanam, the constitutional symptom of bhava emotion. I mean, this is really deep, but it's sweet. We can learn from these deep descriptions of loving ecstasies what is actually the goal of devotional service and what are the symptoms that indicate one is making advancement. By various tastes, the heart is softened and then there's awakening of loving propensity to render spontaneous service to the Lord. This is called the tastya lakshanam, the marginal symptom of bhava. So bhava has a main symptom and a marginal symptom. The marginal symptom is the propensity to render devotional, a spontaneous devotional service. Marginal means in relationship to. So then we go on to the next verse. When that bhava softens the heart completely, when that bhava softens the heart completely, becomes endowed with great feelings of possessiveness in relationship to the Lord and becomes very much condensed, intensified, it is called prema, love of God, by learned scholars. So there's this type of possessiveness that Krishna is mine. I belong to Krishna and Krishna is mine. Mamata. The word mamata. Krishna is mine. So that uh, feeling of possessiveness towards the Supreme Personality of God is one of the features of love. And when it becomes condensed, condensed means more and more concentrated when there's nothing else but that fo focus, that feeling, then 
one is reaching love of God. Of course, in love of God, there are eight stages. So that's described in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and also in Jaiva Dharma. Devotees should learn this, read these things. You might say, well, this is way beyond my level of practice. Yes, even if it is, it doesn't matter. Prabhupada wrote it so he could, we can in, in, for you. so we would know what is the process of bhakti as it goes from one stage to another. Because bhakti is from step to step. There are nine stages. So now we're talking about bhava or affection, and then then from affection comes concentrated affection, which turns into love, the love of God. And love is the ultimate goal, and love is the highest emotion, and love is is what satisfies completely the soul. Nothing else can satisfy. And this is a fact, this is a fact of life. And unless one attains to love one's life, even in this world, when people somehow live without love, they're miserable. <laughs> and even if they get a little bit of that feeling, that still it's not enough. Their life is incomplete. Love is that affection that... So the whole goal of life is to do two things, is to give love and to receive love. So when you give love, you receive love. And even if you give love, and if you don't receive love still, because you give love, you feel happy. So even, you will receive automatically. Sometimes devotees say, nobody loves me. Oh, what happened? Nobody loves me. Well, try loving somebody and see what happens. <laughs> when you love, you actually find it comes back. <laughs> you have to be the initiator. You can't say, well, I'm going to wait until you know, all those people who love me assemble and then, then I'll get all the love that I want and more. No. You have to show love in order to give love, to get love. That's usually how it works. And then it goes on to say here, when one develops an unflinching sense of ownership or possessiveness in the relationship to Lord Vishnu, or in other words, when one thinks Vishnu and no one else to be the only object of love, such an awakening is called bhakti, devotion by exalted persons like Bhishma, Prahlad, Uddhava, and Narada. So this is from the Narada Pancharatra mentioned in Bhakti Rasamrita to Sindhu. So it says here, more of the descriptions of the characteristics and qualities when there is no one else. Because Bhishma Dev, he also says that love means to repose all of, one all of one's affection in one particular object. If you love Krishna, generally you love everyone because everyone is connected to Krishna. Prabhupada said, if you try to love everyone separately without loving Krishna, that is not real love because Krishna is the source of all loving relationships. And because he's called Mula, Mula means root. So as we develop love for Krishna, that extends itself out towards others. Mm -hmm. If by good fortune a living entity develops faith in Krishna, he begins to associate with devotees. When one is encouraged in devotional service by the association of devotees, one becomes free from all unwanted contamination by following the regulative principles and chanting and hearing. When one is freed from all unwanted contamination, he advances with firm faith. So this is nishta. So here, he it's being mentioned two stages here. Actually, it's starting to describe the nine stages. Faith, and then association, and then, of course, the next stage is Brajanakriya, which means taking shelter of Krishna's pure representative and practicing the devotional service. And by doing that, one's contamination becomes free. And then one becomes nishta, or, or fixed, firm faith in devotional service. And then what happens? So this is the platform. I think Maharaj mentioned it last night in his class. This is the platform we want to go. We want to be on the Nishta platform, which is stage number five. So Anartha Nivriti is simply struggling 
And there is, there may be a little glimmer of some taste in, on that level. But until we get to the platform of Nishta, firm faith and practice, that firm faith. Nishta doesn't necessarily mean steady in one's activities. It means steady in one's devotion. <laughs> so it's, it actually takes on another characteristic. Sometimes we think, well, steadiness means I get up every day, go to the classes, I do, you know. I'm like really regulated. That's not necessarily the definition of steady. Steady means I'm steadily giving my devotional mood in execution of my different services. I'm steady in consciousness. I'm steady in, in uh, emotions like that. That's the steadiness. And one becomes steady like that, then uh, one becomes fixed. And then, as here, Lord Chaitanya says, a taste for hearing and chanting also awakens. So that's the fifth stage. And then, after taste is awakened, that's ruchi, that's the sixth stage, nishta, um, ruchi, and then after taste is awakened, a deep attachment arises from that attachment, the seed of love of, for Krishna grows within the heart. So it's important that we may understand the process of the different steps in bhakti, so we know where we are and what stage, and what's the next stage we have to aspire for. And then as we make advancement towards that stage, certain symptoms there. So you can judge where you are if you carefully see certain symptoms in your behavior and in your uh, in your consciousness and in your behavior. What are those symptoms? Okay, this is verse number 13. When that ecstatic emotional stage intensifies, it is called love of God. Such love of, is life's ultimate goal and the reservoir of all pleasure. So this is a purport and it's a little lengthy. So I'll read that. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur summarizes this growth of love of God as a gradual process. It's not something you can't charge the gates of heaven. You have to do it step by step. <laughs> You can make you can make progress accordingly, and some some make progress faster than others. But still, the stages are there. A person becomes interested in devotional service by some good fortune. Eventually, becomes interested in pure devotional service without material contamination. At that point, a person wants to associate with devotees. As a result of this association, he becomes more and more interested in discharging devotional service and hearing and chanting. So here's a very important symptom. When you become more eager for service, when you become more eager to hear and chant, this is a good indication you're making nice progress. Prabhupada continues, the more one is interested in hearing and chanting, the more he is purified from material contamination. That's what we want. Liberation from material contamination is called anartha nivritti, indicating a diminishing of all unwanted things. This is the test of development in devotional service. If one actually develops the devotional attitude, he, be, he must be freed from the material contamination of illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat eating. These are preliminary symptoms. So just to be just to follow the four regulative principles is preliminary. When one is freed from all con material contamination, his firm faith and devotional service awakens. When firm faith develops, a taste arises, and by that taste one becomes attached to devotional service. When this attachment intensifies, the seed of love of Krishna fructifies jai fanchitatva ki jai. Gornatai ki jai. The position is called priti or rati, affection or bhava, emotion. When rati intensifies, it is called love of God. This love of God is actually life's highest perfection and the reservoir of all pleasure. Of course, we hear that over and over again. This is the goal. It's not like the We have some intermediate goals to attain. In other words, getting fixed in our service. Or, you know developing knowledge of Shastra. These are intermediate, intermediate goals, but the goal ultimately 
his love of God. Thus, devotional service is divided into two stages, sadhana bhakti and bhava bhakti. Sadhana bhakti refers to development of devotional service through regulative principles. The basic principle for the execution of devotional service is what? What is the basic principle? You're reading it anyway, so you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, now give give a purport. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Krishna Kai Krishna Kai Sarva Karma. The faith in Krishna is one that has given up everything else except for loving Krishna. Right. So that faith is there. Yeah. Complete determination, sudri danis chai, krishna bhakti kaila sava karma krishna. One gives up everything else except for trying to love Krishna. Mm. That is the highest and that is the, the highest mood of the devotee. And, and it's here it requires strata. Not just faith, but what is it? What is that word? Vishva? Vishvasa. Vishvasa strata, right? Vishvasa kai. Yeah. which refers to that faith which is not what we say moved by any situation in other words even it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita even in the most dangerous type of situation when it's not disturbed that faith mm -hmm. above that there is association with devotees and after that there is initiation by a bona fide spiritual master after initiation, one follows the regulative principles of devotional service. One becomes free from all wanted things. In this way, one becomes firmly fixed and gradually develops a taste for devotional service. Mm. The more the taste grows, the, one, the more one desires to render service to the Lord. So this is it. So when your taste is growing and you have more and more desire for service, that is an indication that you're making nice advancement. In this way, one becomes attached to a particular mellow in the Lord. So here, now we're going into a more of a deeper part of the stages of bhakti. Then these mellows start to, what we say, become a focus. What is my relationship with Krishna? Shanta, dasya, sakya, vatsaya, madhurya. As a, rel as a result of such attachment, so on the stage of attachment, which is the stage after ruchi, then bhava develops affection. Bhava means affection. Bhava bhakti is the platform of pure goodness. By such purified goodness, one heart's, one's heart melts in devotional service. Bhava bhakti is the first seed of love of God. This emotional stage is there, for, there before one attains pure love. When that emotional stage intensifies, it is called prema bhakti, or transcendental love of God. This gradual process is described in the following two verses in which is found in the Bhakti Rasandra Dissinter. I'm sure you all know these two verses. Adao Sradha Dharo Sadhu Sandhu Sadhu Sangota Bhajana Kriyatato Narta Navriti Shyatato Nishta Ruchis Tata Lashaktis Tato Bhavas Tata Premanya Bhadan Danchati Sarakama Yam Preman Padurd Bhave Bhavet Kamaha. In the beginning there must be faith, then one becomes interested in associating with pure devotees. Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulative principles under his order. Thus, one is freed from all unwanted habits and one becomes firmly fixed in devotional service. Thereafter, one develops taste and attachment. This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to regulative principles. Gradually, emotion intensifies, and finally there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of God. 
for a devotee interested in Krishna consciousness. Oh, that's so nice. So you see, this verse describes two, the two, sadhana bhakti and bhava bhakti, and how one moves from stage to stage like that. And so one, one's heart softens and one becomes, and it says, uh, one develops, gets to the emotional stage. People get emotional over a lot of things, right? <laughs> It's more like commotion instead of emotion, but anyway, that's the material counterpart. Emotion, people get emotional if they lose their money, if they lose their girlfriend or boyfriend, if their boyfriend cheats on them or something, their girlfriend goes away and says, see you around, maybe. <laughs> so, you know, this is life in the world. So they get people, and sometimes people commit suicide when life becomes so unbearable due to emotional intensification, right? Nobody becomes, hardly ever, there's there any cases, there are a few rare ones, that people commit suicide because of physical suffering. It's emotional suffering. When emotional suffering becomes so strong, people, oh, they lose all rationality. And, and then what happens could happen, so many things could happen that are not good. So emotion, bhakti is emotion, but it has to be guided by intelligence. If it's not guided by intelligence, then that motion can also become sentiment and get diverted towards something material and look like it's spiritual. Yeah. It could look like it's spiritual, but it's not. It could be something material, but because it's emotional connection, it can, uh, what would be an example of that? I used to know some examples. Adi, what would be a good example of how emotion and devotional service gets diverted to something that is uh, material, but looks like it's spiritual? Any examples, Maharaj? Hmm? Becoming a book distributor, number one. Becoming a book distributor. Yeah. One. Oh, oh, wanting to become number one in book distribution. Mm -hmm. In other words, looking for some, you know, uh, recognition, some adoration, some position, prestige. But, oh, okay, yeah, because, yeah, that is, that actually is material, but it looks spiritual, yes. Now, if it's, if you want to be number one in order to please Krishna, that's different. Yeah, that's my soulmate from last life. <laughs> We've heard of that before. I know I recognize that. One devote, I won't mention any names, but just recently I came across a devotee was telling me somebody stole his wife, and because uh, the man said, "Well, this was my, you know, this is divine love. I couldn't help it." <laughs> really, I mean. I don't want to give too much of a purport on that one, but anyway. So we see, you know, this emotion can go in any direction. Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai. So there's an, I'll tell you a little story about mixed emotions. There was one, um, um, man, he was trying to become spiritual. So he was visiting different sadhus, and he couldn't, they couldn't give him anything. So finally one sadhu was a little bit uh, intelligent. So he just took him onto holy places, figuring that would, might help him. Now the man was a cloth merchant. He was actually a very rich cloth merchant. He was very rich, actually. So now he's taking, and the sadhu is trying to get him to show some emotion, some attraction f 
for devotional life to for Krishna. So he takes them to different holy places. So finally he takes them to Benares, Kashi. And he takes them down to the burning ghats where they burn the bodies. <laughs> so now he's making him, making him watch the burning of the bodies. So he gets an understanding of what is the end of this body. And so the man, he's watching and he starts crying. And he's showing really deep emotions. And so the sadhu is starting to feel good now. Well, he's, and he's finally, finally got to him. <laughs> so he's, and finally the sadhu says, well, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? He said, oh, I simply wasted my life. I was a cloth merchant. I could have made more money selling wood. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> so, you, you know, that material attachment goes deep. <laughs> the Krishna consciousness goes deeper. <laughs> okay, any comments or questions on this beautiful section, really beautiful section of Lord Chaitanya's description, the different stages of love of God. Yes, Adi. Hare Krishna. Uh, you began with the first verse where it's called uh, Nija Gupta Vita. It's a hidden uh, mm. treasure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why uh, would they hide it? Why is it hidden? Well, just like when you uh, have something valuable in your house, you don't want to get it stolen by... People who are unauthorized, you kind of lock it up and hide it, and you make sure it's kept in the most best, the best place. So this treasure of love of God is being hidden in that sense because one has to qualify to reach it. <laughs> Otherwise, if one may come in contact with it and at the same time not be qualified, they may also misunderstand it, misuse it, uh, not appreciate it, or even criticize it. Mm. So to keep it away from the un unauthorized thieves. <laughs> Is that a good analogy? I mean, Prabhupada, he would keep his, he had a, he had this Almira, which he would lock things up in. He would put special things in there. But then he would have two keys. One, he would lock the Almira with one key, and then he would lock You'd have another key that would lock that, lock that lock. So there was a lock. So if you opened the first one, you still had to get to the second one. <laughs> so yeah, something that is valuable, something that is precious, something that is, you know, what we say shouldn't be in the hands of the wrong people. Just like Prabhupada would say, and even the, the demons. Uh, he said we should pre preach this this message to the faithful, because the faithless will not understand, and they may also criticize. And we said in the ninth offense to the holy name, like that. No, no. In the Christian tradition, they say, "Do not throw your pearls before swines," because if you throw pearls in the, for a pig, he'll just step on them or eat them or something. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Oh, it's just a, a, a story. Maharaj, I believe in his diary he writes that Prabhupada not only had one lock for the key, but he had nine different keys and they were all, one key was put into one place and it was locked and then that key that was locked, it was put in, he had nine of them. And then one day Prabhupada asked Tamil Krishmaraj who was watching after that key, 
that lo unlocked all the other keys. He said, where is it? He said, I can't find it, Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, call the GBC. <laughs> 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 he wanted to have a meeting with him. So Tom Kushmar was just looking all over. And then he figured out, he pried open the, the, the next to the last lock <laughs> and got that key out. <laughs> so he could open all the, the original. So when you decide to call the GBC, then things happen. <laughs> Back then, at least. <laughs> yes. Okay, behind. No, no. Oh, is there a question over here, too? No? Over here. Thank you, Maharaj, uh, for, for the lecture. Uh, uh, this uh, Krishna is, is mine. This sounds uh, familiar to our experience. We, we oftentimes claim or, uh, or feel that somebody is ours, protecting our, uh, us, our false ego, from claims of our enemies, nourishing our false ego. So this is uh, probably not it, our wife or our friend. Uh, I mean, this sounds somehow improper, this feeling, but it's quite, uh, I can identify very much. Uh, I, I'm hardly wait that Krishna is mine. I had, and I had discussions present. with people on that, and I also agree with the, your, your premise. Yeah. I know one very senior devotee in our movement who says that, and I questioned that, but I said, that's for Radharani alone. Krishna is mine. When we say, I am Krishna's, then that's perfect. But this person was saying, no, Krishna is mine. So it seems like it has some value, but I, I, I stay away from that. <laughs> I, I think that's just very, very, very high. <laughs> but some people have a different opinion of that. But if you have that genuine emotion, that might, then that's, that's something else. That emotion is there. It has to be genuine, not just somebody saying, well, Krishna is mine. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it, one could think like that, and that's that's wrong. That's wrong thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna is mine, and he's going to get you. <laughs> that's wrong. Krishna says, "Samoham sabhuteshu namedevaishtana priya." He's equal to everyone, but he reciprocates according to how you approach him. Hmm. So yeah, that 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 statement can be very much misused, mm -hmm. and it has been misused. Okay, well, thank you very much, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Sri Chaitanya Chari Tamrita Ki Jai. Okay? Yes. Let me walk over. Uh, you want to take breakfast with me? You can. Yeah, I'll take I'm going to take right away, so. I also take right away. Okay. Okay. okay.